Hello, and welcome to Freshman Engineering Program Mock Interviews. My name is Margo Purdy, and I'm the Career Events and Co-op Coordinator for the University of Arkansas College of Engineering. We are so excited to have J.B. Hunt sponsor this event and want you to know that we truly appreciate you taking the time to help our students. Due to COVID-19 social distancing restrictions, we will be using the virtual platform AirMeet to conduct the FEP mock interviews this year. First, I'd like to um, show you how to set up an AirMeet account and register for an event. So bear with me while I switch screens. I need to share with all of you that because the FEP mock interviews are spread out over a week time frame, I had to set up five different links for each day, AirMeet links for each day. These will be in the welcome email that you receive. They're labeled FEP mock interviews day one, day two, et cetera, so they're easy to locate and find. Find the link that corresponds with the day that you've signed up to volunteer and click on it. You will be instructed to either log in or create an account. To create an account, you Once you've created the account, click on the initials in the top right corner, click profile. This is where you can then upload a, an image, a picture of yourself. You can put in your job title under designation and put JB Hunt under organization. And once you do that, you are set and ready to enter the event. Now, I want to go over some technical tips for having a positive experience in AirMeet. AirMeet is best supported in Chrome browser version 79 or higher. Use a desktop or laptop, AirMeet will not work on a cell phone or tablet. Enable the microphone and camera when prompted and make sure to exit Zoom or Teams prior to entering AirMeet. If you leave Zoom or Teams open, you will experience video and audio issues. So just make sure that they're closed and you'll be all set. Disable the VPN and firewall settings if you're on an office laptop and make sure to have a stable and strong internet connection. If the video feed is not working, refresh the page and or restart the browser. Now I wanna take you into AirMeet show you what the event platform looks like. Again, just bear with me. Okay, so you'll use your email and the password you created to enter the AirMeet event. You can verify that you're in the right day by looking up here at the title and it, the, the first page when you enter, there's a title page that pops up and um, it's on there as well. So each event is set up the exact same way to make it easier if you're volunteering on multiple days. Um, every day we have a morning welcome session set up and an afternoon welcome session set up, except on Friday because there are no afternoon interviews on Friday. These are 15 minute brief sessions to give you um, the lay of the land and for us to answer any questions that you may have. The day of the event, when you click on it, when there's more people in here, it'll look different right now because I'm the host and I'm the only one in here. There isn't anything in there, but the day of the event, there will be. Um, I will also point out over here on the right hand side, um, there are some different tabs. Manage abuse is to report if anybody is chatting inappropriate messages in the chat feed. I don't expect that we'll need to use that at all. Um, attendees, you can see, you can click on that and see everybody that's in the event. And again, I'm the only one in there right now. The chat feature, there's a live chat feed and a direct chat feed. The live chat feed is everyone in the event can see whatever is put in the live chat. In direct chat, you can find an attendee, anybody that's in the event and send them a direct personal chat. The direct chat is a great way to reach me during the event if you need help or have any questions. And um, it's also a way to 
reach out to a student if you're waiting on them. <clears throat> you can send them a direct chat to tell them that you're available. We have instructed students to be responsible for keeping an eye on their table. I'm going to talk about that here in a minute. Um, questions during the event. It won't do anything right now if I click on it because I'm the only one in here, but you can click on this and type a question. Um, and then down here, the purple circle with the question mark, that's for air meet technical support. You should not need that at all during the event, but that is what that that button is for. Um, so back over here in the in the social lounge where the tables are, table number one is always going to be the help desk. This is where students will check in and find out which table they're interviewing at and the name of the employer they're interviewing with. Once students have done that, if their table is not open or available to interview yet, they can come have a seat in the waiting area. This is an overflow table for students to wait at in case um, their table is not open and this is where um, we've instructed students that if they have a seat here, the onus is on them to keep an eye on their interview table for when the seat opens up and then they can come join the employer at their table, their assigned table. However, we are on a tight schedule and if you are a little bit stressed about the schedule and you want to send them a direct chat, in the chat feature, you are welcome to do that. Um, you could also do it in the live chat, but I, I advise that if you do send a chat in the live chat asking a student to come join you, that you refer to them by name so that the correct student comes over to the table and there isn't any confusion there. Um, so each interview table is numbered and you will have an assigned table. So say, for example, you're assigned to table number eight. You'll come over and click on a chair. An empty chair looks just like this. Click on it, and if you've uploaded a picture, your picture will appear on the seat. If you haven't, your initials will. Mine is appearing in the corner because I'm the host. So that indicates that there's one person at the table. This, If this chair is empty and the student shows up for their interview and they've checked in and it's their time, they can come click on the seat and join you. Once they do that, a menu appears at the bottom with icons for the video chat feature, the text chat feature, and screen share. It very much looks similar to Teams, the icons, um, and that's how you'll communicate with the student when they sit down, the video chat feature. You'll do a brief introduction with the student and then go right into the resume review portion. Um, the student will click the screen share icon to share their resume with you. Please know that once they do that, they can no longer see their screen or their resume. So they have been instructed to have a piece of paper, a pen, and preferably a hard copy of their resume in front of them so that they can take notes while you're providing feedback. Um, then when they're done, it's going to be very brief, about five minutes with the resume review. Um, hopefully they'll remember to stop sharing their screen. If they don't, just gently remind them so that you can go back to video chatting for the question part of the interview process. Um, then um, the last five minutes will be spent on you providing feedback about the interview. If for some reason students experience technical difficulty sharing their screen, they have been instructed to not stress out about it, that you will both just move on to the next part of the session, the, the questions of the, the interview questions. Um, this experience is literally just to get students comfortable with the process and to give them a positive experience. So we don't want them stressing if they're having technical issues and can't get their resume up on the screen. It is an option if you want as the employer to send them a chat with your email address and ask them to email you their resume, but that is your discretion. If you do not wanna share your email address with a student, we completely understand that and don't expect you to. It's just an option if you want to do that. But keep in mind that it may take a while for the resume to appear in your email box. And if that's the case, if you've hit the 10 minute mark from the start of the session, you just need to move on, forget the resume review and move on. So again, I don't expect that there'll be technical issues, but if there are, once you hit that 10 minute mark from the start of the session, just move on to the interview questions and don't worry about it. Um, and the student has been told the same. To leave a table, all you do is click leave. 
if you wanted to come over to the help desk because you had a question or needed something, just come over and join an empty chair. Um, but again, you can also direct chat me um, from the chat if you have a question or need something. I want to show you that uh, down here we have two private tables set up. These are set up so that if a staff member needs to have a private conference with a student, we can do so away from the help desk where there are other people. That's what these are for down here. And again, each event, each day of the week is set up the exact same way. So if you're volunteering on more than one day, each day should look the same. Friday has a few less tables um, because that's only got the morning session and it doesn't have the afternoon welcome session on it. So that's pretty much the lay of the land for AirMeet. It's very user friendly. Um, it's. I've tried to simplify it as much as possible. Um, I will point out also that the interview tables are set up that there could be no more than two chairs at a table so that that's so that nobody interrupts you. I can, however, as a host join a table at any time. The only time I will do that is if you're running way over on time and there's there's a student waiting. I may pop in and say, hey, just to let you know your time's up and there's another student here for their interview. Um, so nobody would, should interrupt you except for me if needed. All right, now I want to kind of go over some details for each student session. Sorry, get my screen share switched out here. All right, so for each student session, the, everyone is allotted 30 minutes. So again, you're gonna have that brief introduction, just hi, my name is, welcome, and then go right into the resume review. The resume review, again, is very brief. It should be no more than about five minutes. Um, some tips for the resume review, and I know that um, the JB Hunt recruiters are going to kind of go over this a little more in detail with you. But what we generally tell employers is be honest, but be kind. Um, this is the first interview experience for most of these students. Use it as an opportunity for confidence building as much as constructive feedback. Provide suggestions that are true for the industry as a whole, not necessarily what you specifically prefer. And look to see that students have hit the basic pieces of information on their resume, such as education, professional and or classroom experience and appropriate community involvement. You will most likely only have time to provide one to three points at the most of feedback on their resume, and that's OK. Um, let's see. OK, after you do the resume review, you're going to go right into the interview questions. This should take approximately 15 minutes, and then the last five minutes of the session will be spent on you providing feedback to the student. It may be best to set a timer to stay on target, especially when you have back to back interviews set up. Um, I would just advise that you mention that to the student during the brief introduction um, so that they're not caught off guard when the timer goes off. Um, and again, just to summarize, <clears throat> brief introduction, five minute resume review, 15 minute interview and five minute feedback. Another tool that you're going to have to use during this process is the rating form. Remember to use the student's UARC email address on the rating form. This is how each student will be identified to receive their participation credit. Um, the JB Hunt recruiters will go over a little bit more detail on the rating form for you, but just know that this is mainly participation credit is what they're they're getting graded on. Um, it's not how well they answered questions. Um, if they were tapping a pencil because they were nervous, it's it's just it's really truly for participation and we want it to be a positive experience for them. Again, if you have any questions or need help during the event, you can direct chat me, Margo Purdy, or you can hop over to the help desk and um, any staff member will help you. We um, really appreciate you volunteering your time and we are so thankful to JB Hunt for sponsoring the 2021 FEP mock interviews. 
We look forward to seeing you the week of March 15th. And if at any time you have any questions, please don't hesitate to reach out. And um, I hope you have a great day. Thanks again.